Now to conclude, we are going to uh, look at some representations of some simple curves given in polar coordinates and regions as well of the plane that are given in polar coordinates. And to start with, we're going to look at these polar equations and try to um, convert them into Cartesian equations. So R equal to, well, geometrically, it's quite clear what that is. It's a set of points that are at distance 2 from the pole. So if we're in a polar system that is attached to the Cartesian coordinates, um, this is R equal 2 and theta equal 0. And as theta changes, uh, the point turns around and forms, traces out a circle centered at the origin and of radius 2. And we know the equation for that. It should be x squared plus y squared, which is the square of the distance, equal the square of the radius, so equal 4. And of course, um, this is what we obtain here, because r squared is x squared plus y squared. Second example is the curve theta equals 3 pi over 4. So geometrically, if I point in the direction 3 pi over 4, and I have no condition on r on the distance to the pole, well, I can look at what happens when I change r and keep this same theta, take a point here, and when r increases, I'm moving away in that direction. If r decreases back to 0, it goes here, and then for r negative, I go on the other side. So if I have no restriction on r, not even that r be positive, I end up with this line through the origin. What is its equation? Well, we know that tangent of theta is y over x, at least for x non-zero. That means y is tangent 3 pi over 4 times x, that is y is negative x, because tangent 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. The condition x equals 0, of course, is not a problem, uh, because when x is 0, then y is also 0 in this equation, y equal negative x. And therefore, we recover the pole which uh, is a point where we can pick theta equals 3 pi over 4 because at the pole we can take any angle. What about the curve r equals 3 sine of theta? Well, let's try to calculate the uh, Cartesian coordinates and see if we recognize a curve that we know. We know that y is r sine of theta, and that means sine of theta can be written as y over r, at least when r is not 0. So when I have the curve r equals 3 times sine, it's 3 times y over r, and multiplying both sides by r, I get that r squared is equal to 3y. But I know how to express r squared in terms of x and y. It's a distance to the origin, so it's x squared plus y squared. So I end up with x squared plus y squared equals 3y. You may or may not recognize what that is at this point, but if we put everything on one side, you see that this y square minus 3y can be rewritten by completing the square. I can write y square minus 3y as y minus 3 half squared, and then subtract the square of 3 half, which is 9 fourths. Putting the 9 fourths on the other side, we end up with x square plus the square of y minus 3 half is equal to the square of 3 half. And this is the Cartesian equation of a circle centered at the point of coordinates 0, 3 half and of radius 3 half. In other words, it looks like that and it is a circle that is centered on the y-axis and tangent to the x-axis. This is in general what we would find with the same type of calculation um, if we look at a curve of polar equation of the type r equal a constant times sine of theta. What about r? Now what about the last curve, r equal cosine theta? As you may expect, we're going to do something quite similar to the previous one, and uh, it would generalize to curves of the kind r equal a constant multiple of cosine theta. So we start the same way, observing that if x is r cosine theta, then cosine theta can be written as x over r, at least for r non-zero. And the pole, which corresponds to r equals 0, is part of the curve r equal cosine theta because cosine takes a value 0, for instance, when theta is pi over 2. 
Okay, so we plug x over r for cosine theta in the equation, and we get r equal x over r, multiplying both sides by r, we get r square equal x. And r square can be expressed in terms of x and y as x square plus y square. So we get x square plus y square equal x. And just like in the previous case, we take x on the left hand side and then complete the square in x square minus x. When we complete the, the square, we get x minus 1 half squared minus 1 fourth, which means that we obtain the Cartesian equation x minus 1 half squared plus y squared equal 1 fourth, which is 1, 1 half squared, and therefore we obtain the equation of a circle centered at the point of Cartesian coordinates 1 half 0 and of radius 1 half. In other words, this circle which is centered on the x-axis and tangent to the y-axis. Now let's turn to sketch of regions that are given by uh, uh, inequalities in polar coordinates. Starting with uh, the inequality 2 less than or equal than r less than or equal to 4. So r is between 2 and 4 and r equal 2 is a circle of uh, centered at the origin of radius 2 and r equal 4 the, the circle centered at the origin of radius 4 and so the uh, region corresponds to a uh, annulus uh, where we have this bounding circle of radius 2 and 4 so this is this red region that we have sketched here how about an interval of values for theta what does that mean, uh, the region of the plane for which theta is between 0 and pi over 3, where we include the uh, values 0 and pi over 3. So pointing in the direction 0 and in the direction pi over 3 correspond to this 2 half rays, and values in between corresponds uh, to this angular sector, but that's when we're going in the positive direction for each one of these half rays, so when R is uh, non-negative. If we point in the opposite direction for each one of these rays in that angular sector, uh, we obtain as well uh, the other side of this angular sector, so we get some cone um, where the vertex is at the origin and where we have uh, both directions of the cone. If we add to that the condition that r is at least 2, then we look at the circle r equal 2, and if, the, if r is greater or equal to 2, that means uh, the distance to the origin is greater or equal to 2, so that means we just keep what is um, outside of the disk, including the boundary, the bounding circle. So we obtain this region. For the last uh, example, we're looking at the region where r is non-negative and bounded above by 3 sine theta. We have seen um, in the previous exercise that the curve r equals 3 sine theta is a circle of radius 3 half centered at the point of Cartesian coordinates 3, 0, 3 half. So it is this circle centered on the y-axis tension to the x-axis. But that's for the equality, right? So this point on the circle corresponds to r equals 3 sine theta for a given theta. But now you see that um, if r is less than or equal to 3 sine theta, it should correspond to this line segment on our half ray, whereas r greater than 3 sine theta, the distance to the origin greater than the distance to the origin for this red point on the circle corresponds to this um, red part of the half ray. I'm sorry, this uh, green part. And therefore, if we do that for each theta, we're going to fill up the disk. And what we obtain is um, this red disk that is centered at the point of Cartesian coordinates 0, 3 half and of radius 3 half including the bounding circle because the inequality uh, is not strict. Now let's turn to the next video
to study in more details these polar curves.